I figured I'd make a video about the Apple I since it's often overlooked at just how revolutionary it was. There's lots of videos about it, but not that many people mention about why it was so revolutionary compared to what else was around at the time. So, let's start with uh, the Apple I. So to understand this properly, first we have to start with the personal computer revolution. The machine that started it all back in 1974 was called the Altair 8080. Sorry, 8800. This bad boy had an S100 system bus with an Intel 8800 8-bit 2 MHz CPU. You programmed it from these switches on the front of it, kind of like how you program a PDP. Alternatively, you could load paper tape from your teletype and get it into a state where it was more user friendly where you could just use the teletype. It was revolutionary because this was the first time you could have a computer that actually fit inside your house. But it was not overly useful unless you were planning on uh, building your own expansion cards and had a background with something like the PDP-11 as well as a teletype at your house. So Steve Wozniak saw this machine and he knew he could do better. It was obvious that selling computers to home users and small businesses could be a real winning idea. However, uh, he noticed that the Altair went about it all wrong. Uh, he would demonstrate this in his next computer by getting the formula right. So, the Apple I computer, 1976. This computer was a truly brilliant creation. It sold as both a kit hobbyists could build or as a pre-populated motherboard. It was a system for anyone. What made this so brilliant compared to other attempts at computers were that you didn't need to have an external terminal or teletype. This was the first computer of its kind. It hooked directly to the keyboard and your television set rather than printing off on paper with a dedicated teletype. It could generate NTSC color video when other computers could barely manage to do more than print uh, the ASCII uh, character set on a dedicated teletype. So it boot into a ROM monitor that was called Wasmon, where you could enter in uh, your program in hex directly, saving a heck of a lot of time compared to typing it in with the switches on something like the Altair. Uh, it even had the ability to hook to a consumer cassette recorder and store the information directly on cassette tape as well as play it back with a series of clicks. No punch cards, paper tape, or reel-to-reel -reel machines the size of a refrigerator for this thing. It was truly something that you could have in your house. Using a MOS technology 6502 CPU clocked at 1.022 MHz, this thing was a bit of a powerhouse as well. The clock speed was chosen because it was two sevenths of the clock of NTSC video, thus reducing the, amount, the cost and chip count by doing this. 4 to 8 kilobytes of onboard RAM that was also expandable to 48 kilobytes and later to 64. Uh, also made this thing uh, fairly capable and it could uh, store programs on the cassette tape as well as I previously mentioned. Was showed off this invention to the Homebrew Computer Club, changing the industry forever and eventually uh, securing funding for the Apple II. Nobody had ever seen anything remotely like this before. It was a computer with a built-in teletype that hooked straight up to your television. Everything in an all-in-one unit. Nothing like this had ever been created before and shook the industry to its core causing rapid developments and changes in the industry quickly. Now if you like this video, push like, maybe give me a subscribe, and I'm going to probably do one on the Apple II next that'll be a lot more in depth. I'm going to probably cover several of the Apple II models. Thank you.